Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and in today's video, which is sponsored by the kind folks at Squarespace, more on that later, I wanted to share with you a super cool, super flexible, no lights, no HDRI setup for product lighting. Of course, that's how I use it, but you could use it for lighting a character or maybe even environments or really whatever you can think of. But what I have set up on screen now is pretty much a default blender scene to which I've added a model of some headphones. If you want to know how to model those exact headphones, then you can follow along with the tutorial on my channel that covers exactly that. Besides the model, I wanted to also mention that I'm rendering in Cycles. This method works pretty good with EV2, but Cycles is obviously going to give you a lot nicer lighting, so I would suggest that. But I have a couple of view for, viewports set up here. This one on the left is just a regular 3D viewport, and the one on the right is another 3D viewport that's looking through the camera I've added, and that is in our rendered view. Now direct your eyes to the top of the screen, and you'll see that I have a shader editor, which is where we'll be doing most of the work today. So let's go ahead and get started with the setup. Normally in a shader editor, you'd be working with your materials, but you can also view the nodes for your world settings. If you click here in the top left and set this to world, you'll have access to those nodes and see that we have our default gray background with this yeah, nasty gray color plugged into the output, which gives us the most bland and boring lighting ever possible in Blender, but for some reason is the default, uh, a cold hearted treat to any beginner who enters the rendered view in cycles, but fear not, we are about to obliterate this boring world. To kick things off with a little more excitement, I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a sky texture. I'll plug that into the color input of our background. And if you've never seen the sky texture before, then feel free to uh, just close this tutorial immediately and have some fun because this thing is a beast. You got a lot of control over this nice sky dome with a variety of different realistic settings. I'll leave everything pretty much default, but I am going to uncheck this sun disk box. Now, if you've done much lighting before, you'll know uh, whether in photography or 3D software like Blender, you'll know that to create dramatic lighting, you don't want too many lights in your scene. Uh, we're gonna emulate that with a texture to reduce the amount of light in the sky so that's less of a full dome and more so just spots of light. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a Voronoi texture. And then what I'll do is plug the distance output on the texture into the strength of our background. Now, if we spin our view around, you'll see what that's doing. The distance is outputting values from zero to one, which is reducing the strength of our background based on that texture. And although this is kind of cool, I want to reduce it even more so that we get some greater variety. And to do that, I'm going to add in a converter color ramp. And then if we pull these stops together, you'll see that we kind of get these circles happening, which are basically going to function as lamps for us. Now right now the circles are black, but we want it the other way around. So let's just move these stops so that the white is on the left and the black is on the right. And now you can move these however you please, but something like this is gonna work pretty good for our setup. Now one thing we can do is adjust the scale of this texture to give us more or less lights basically, but this is rather limited. So what I wanna do is add in a texture coordinate node, which will allow me to have some more control over the mapping of this texture. And I will take this object input, drag it into the vector so that to get this you know, set up really powerful, I'm gonna add in an empty to our scene by pressing Shift A, empty, and I'll make that a cube. Then I'll use this little dropper here to select the empty. Now when I move, rotate, or even scale this empty, it's gonna have an effect on the look of our Voronoi Voron texture. <laughs> And right now you can see, already see the power of this setup and its ability to create a variety of different looks with very simple input just by adjusting the empty. You could of course animate the rotation or scale or location of the empty to create an animated light setup if you add some keyframes there. Um, similar to some of the examples I shared at the beginning of the video and on my Instagram. But before we go too much further, let's take a quick break, stretch our legs, and learn a little bit about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Stop calling yourself a freelancer and start calling yourself what you really are, a business owner. It's time to ditch that hourly work, quit that race to the bottom, and get serious with a professional website from Squarespace. Squarespace is a perfect place to get a website going and start making a name for yourself. With Squarespace, you can create a professional-looking portfolio site fast. Pick one of their pre-designed portfolio templates, pop in your work, and start sharing. Once you get some eyeballs on that beautiful side of yours, give your clients a place to reach you. Squarespace has pre-built contact forms that make client contact easy peasy. 
Get started today at squarespace.com slash Dirk and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code Dirk. Now, although it's convenient to be able to see what's happening with the sky texture when we're adjusting the empty, it can be a little distracting to see the lighting on your actual object. So I'll, or sorry, in the background behind your object. So I'll go into the render properties tab here and then under film, check transparent. So that's something you might wanna to toggle on and off easily. So you can right click and add it to your quick favorites. Then whenever you press Q in one of these viewports here, you'll quickly have that setting available to you so you can toggle it on and off easily when you're making adjustments. Now, another limitation of this setup is that sometimes when the sky is oriented a certain way, you might have a light kind of going straight at your object. And you may know from more traditional lighting setups that you usually don't wanna light anything directly from the front because it kind of creates this nasty flat look that just isn't very exciting. And one way I like to avoid that is by just adding in an object to block light from the front so that no matter what orientation our sky is, we won't have any light hitting the object right on from the front. So to do that, I will press Shift A, add in a plane, and just move that to the front a little bit, scale it up a tad. You can even press E to extrude this out, X to delete that face, so that we just have this kind of nice filter blocking any light coming in from the front. It's obviously also blocking our view of the object because it's in front of the camera. So in the settings on that object under ray visibility, I'll uncheck camera so that our camera does not see that object, but it's still blocking light from the front. Now for this object, I'll add in a material and just delete the principal shader and that'll just give us a kind of shadeless black light blocking material. So the setup is basically complete, but there are a few more things that you might like to do to make this a little bit more powerful. The first of which is going to be having a little more control over the power of the background strength. So the way that I'll do that is by adding in a map range node after my color ramp. So the color ramp is now outputting values from zero to one, uh, black to white, which means that our max background strength is one, but you might want it to be a little bit higher. So I will drag this value up to something higher like a, a four or a five maybe. And now we have a much brighter setup. Another thing that can make this quite a bit more exciting would be to add in a hue saturation value node after our sky texture in this color field. And this will allow us to make the colors stronger by increasing the saturation and also allows us to change the colors by adjusting the hue. You can see when we kind of play with that, we've got you know a lot more uh, interest happening here. You can start playing with different colors besides the default ones that are being output by the sky texture. So the rest is totally up to you, but with a relatively simple node setup, we can start experimenting with a whole range of lighting setups that you could use in a final animation or just use it kind of like I do for experimenting and getting ideas. Um, the whole setup is going to be available on my Patreon where you can download the sky texture, how I have it set up here, and I'll also include a few of my models from past tutorials in the file so that you can experiment with those. But of course, I encourage you to try it out with your own. But thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you end up using this setup, definitely share it with me on Instagram or Twitter or wherever you like to share things. Tag me. I would love to see what you come up with. Be sure you like and subscribe. Give the videos a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Do what you do. Enjoy your day. Thanks for being here. I love you so much. Goodbye.